If you want to color along, you can pause this right now and go over to my Etsy shop and pick up the coloring pages. There's going to be five different types of fence um, color along pages here. And the one I'm going to show you first is the gated one. Then there's a regular fence, which I'm probably not going to do a color along. Then a cedar fence probably won't do the color along. Then there's one that's got a rock bottom and one that's got a brick bottom. Um, one of the fences is a horizontal. But so there's different elements in these to learn. I will try to touch on the rock one and on the brick one. Those will be in a separate video later. But if you'll, um, again, this is the, the colors I'm going to use today, the Marco Renoirs. And if you've got my conversion chart, I know some of these convert over. Um, I don't know which one's for sure and all that. Um, I just don't take the time to look that up. But anyway, there's that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And the thing I want to start on first is this little medallion or emblem thing here. And so I'm going to get those three grays that I had listed, and we're going to start with the 86 and do anything. Yeah, this is grayscale. So we're going to do anything that is that lighter color. And this is where you do want a better point on your pencil. But this is just where the light is hitting that. Okay, so you do the lightest sections, all right? We could do the lightest sections here. Um, it's the same type thing. Anything that looks like it has printed out as white, then that's what you're going to do. And then we're going to do right here, okay? Um, I do use a heavier paper. It's like a cardstock, so you can pick it up at the craft stores. You can get some off of Amazon. Okay, now this is number 87. So now I'm going to come in and pick up the next lightest. And you're not going to see a whole lot of difference here because this was gray to start with. Okay, but I'm getting down in all the little holes of the paper and that's that's what I want to do so you can tell there really is some coloring going on there and then you would do these elements the same I'm not going to take time on all that because I do want to have time to get to the fence okay now I don't know if you can tell or not but I can tell this is going on darker so that's good and I just went ahead and did that little shadow piece that's hanging down there too so you can go ahead and do these shadows here while you've got the color out and you're going on it. Okay, so now that should look very dimensional when you get to that in person. Now let's go ahead and start looking at the wood. I have pulled, yeah, it's a pink and a peach. When you're coloring, don't be afraid to layer your colors, all right? Um, the more you can layer, the more variety you have. Okay, so let's um, let's just go ahead and do the highlights again. And let's see, I think I'm going to start with this peachy color. It's number 75. And this is where the light's hitting. So I'm going to do these bars going across. Sharpen your pencils a little bit better than mine are. I haven't done much coloring in the last eight weeks. For you that were keeping up, um, Hubby did go back to work. He was off for eight weeks. He goes to therapy next. We're still weaning him out of that neck brace from his neck fusion. But um, his, his doctor, who is um, a specialist here in Dallas area, I think he's actually Frisco or Plano, is, okay, this is number nine is um, Jeffrey Caterini, and he did a superb job. Just couldn't be any more thrilled with the results that we got. Now, this is number 41, and you can see where some of this is a little darker. 
I'm going to get in there and go with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, husband's first opinion wanted to fuse his whole neck. And with um, Dr. Caterini, we were able to go in and they only fused two and then replaced two discs with man-made little plastic things. So um, if you ever have to go through that, the first two weeks are the worst. But it does, it does get better. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of hitting at this dark area. And then I look down and I see, oh yeah, I've pulled darker browns. But can you see how there's so much of that white still poking through there? So I'm going to layer anyway. So now I'm going to come over and grab my 48. And I'm going to start in on another picket. And this one is actually showing some wood grain that comes around different. So, and you can tell right here where their nails have already kind of rusted or how or screws, whatever they used. So get that in. I'm going to go ahead and get this dark piece in. But I want you to see how grayscale really just shows you what to color. All right. And my pages are not expensive at all. And I've told you before, I did the whole series on brick. And when I did that brick series, I suggested that when you're finished coloring them, you put them in a binder or a uh, some sort of a book so that you know, hole punch them or put them in plastic. And that way, when you come across a coloring page that needs a fence, Hopefully you've written down what colors you used where, and you'll have that as a reference sheet. So that's the reason for doing that, okay? It, um, it'll just help you out later when you're needing something. I do that when I do skin tones, you know. And now I'm going to grab this other brown that I had pulled, number 44. And I'm going to use it in here some. And I'm just overlapping these browns. I am keeping my strokes straight this time. You know how usually I'm all about the circles? Well, I'm keeping these straight because wood grain is straight. Okay? And you're going to do neater than I am. But I just want you to see how we can get this to really looking like wood. It's not real difficult. And this plank is wider than this plank. Okay, it's one of those fences where they put here and then they put the other one on the back so you're not seeing as much of it. But that also leaves a bit of a shadow cast right here where they're overlapped. Okay, so get that shadow in where that overlapping is going on. And again, I'm going to just centralize on one area here so you get the idea of how to do pickets. And then from there, you know, you can just have fun with it. Use whatever colors you want. You want a redwood fence? Do a redwood. Um, now I'm going to pick up that 75. And let's come in here and do a little bit of lighter. But see now when I go over this, it becomes a new color. You see there? So that's what we're after is just making this particular fence look like it's a it's a new fence but we want it to look a little weathered. So you're gonna see me layering these colors back and forth. But yeah, um, definitely start your little book and, and put these pages in. Label what colors you're using. Now see, I don't know if you can see from there, but see how you can see this wood grain coming in right through here. So I'll go back in, and I just grabbed a pencil, 44. It's not gonna matter a whole lot what colors I'm grabbing. At this point, I just wanna make sure I keep that wood grain in. And do you see how I'm doing little choppies? 
I'm not just drawing a line. I'm doing little choppy bits up and down. Okay? And coming around. And that's how you make this wood to really pop that grain. And then let's pick up 41. Sure, why not? And let's just go over this because we want to deepen that a little. We just didn't want it as dark as the others were because we want this wood grain to really be able to pop out. But do you see how I'm just going around? My pencil is laying down almost so that you can see what's going on in the picture. Okay? So you could use just those colors and overlap them and do all the boards in these colors. You could do different boards in different shades. So it looks like it's a fence that was put together nicely but with leftovers. Okay, now I am going to come in. Um, now let's use this one. 48. Because what I want to show you is there's not necessarily a rhyme or reason to which colors I always use. I just keep blending till I get that effect I want. Now see, it's deepening up some, but it's not as dark. If I had used this straight, see how dark it is? But because I used it over that lighter shade, it just gives me a total different value. Okay? And then I can decide, do I want this fence light? Do I want it dark? Do I want it mixed? And see that board's behind these two boards. So is this board. So I'm going to come in here and deepen down that line. Deepen down this line because there would be some shadows. And then I'm going to come back in. Let's use this number nine. And let's see what happens here. See how it's turning it a little more softer brown? And see, I could have just as easily picked up um, this number 75. And these don't have color names on them. So that's why you're not getting a color name. And see, if I put this on, it's going to turn even lighter. And if you purchase these, um, if you would like the color copies sent to you, just pop a memo out. It's, it's got a place where on Etsy you can um, email me. And just go ahead and email me and tell me that you would like the full color copies so that you know what colors these were originally. Okay, I'm going to go back to 44. Because this, to me, right now, really pops out a whole lot more than this. Whoa, sorry. Wow, I was trying to adjust the light, not tear up the camera system. I hit it with my elbow. Sorry about that. So I'm just putting another layer on here. And I still have white showing through there anyway. So putting another layer on is a good idea. And I'm just going over the whole thing knowing that I'm going to have to come back in and possibly add my grain again. But isn't this a beautiful fence? Okay, so I'll come back in with this 48 and I'm just going to put that grain in again because by now I know where it was. Just keep those jagged lines. This kind of shows you how long this should take, too. Okay? Because all this, we've only really done one picket right there, and then we've started the other two. Okay? So we're at 15 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to another page. And let's see, this is another page that is going to be available in that five-piece packet. I have knot holes. Um, let's just keep using these same pencils. This is 44. 
So you would just do your knot hole dark. Now, the good thing about this fence and being able to practice on it is this is how you would do a floor. This is also how you would do a wood floor. Do your darker areas. I just, I don't think you need to see me do the entire picture on these for you to get the idea. Um, if you're on the group, though, Coloring Books Keep It Clean and you get these, I would love for you to post them and show the ladies. I'm going to 41 now. And I'm just going to come in and do the next area. See, there's lights and darks when you do grayscale. So you're just going to do your lights and darks. And wood is so forgiving. Okay, it really, really is. And if you're doing floor, you want to be sure and keep an area lighter where it's been walked on and then darker around the edges of the hallway or whatever you're doing, 48. And um, that will make it look so much more realistic. Okay, so I know this is a fence and that's why we're doing it this way, but I'm just saying it's kind of the same effect if you're doing a wood floor. And see, I'm just skipping around with these pencils, putting all the different colors in, making sure they're in different areas. Going a little darker at this edge, just because there is a shadow there. And all these photos I took just walking around my neighborhood. Okay. So um yeah, I don't I don't lift pictures from other people. Okay, 75. Let's just see what happens. This is all part of the learning and layering. Just seeing what you can do with the different colors. Okay, so this is just one picket out of the whole fence. But see how you can see these knot holes? I'm kind of going around them. And you just keep layering your colors. Just keep swapping out your colors. And um, I would do, for myself, I do a picket at a time. You could go through and do all your darks, then come back in with your lights. Um, let's grab this pinkish color, number nine and just come in here and get some more of this. We're just gonna keep adding layers until all the gray and white is no longer peeking through the paper. Okay, this paper has tooth, so it takes lots of layers to get all that covered. Yeah, no, definitely. You could do this as a painted fence. Um, just pick your color. You could do it as a stain. To do it in a stain, you're just going to pick a color and then um, do it lightly so that the grain still shows through and it looks like a wash. Okay, so there's one picket done. All right, so that's part of the package. Um, this fence was actually a redwood or a cedar rather. So I would come in here and I would do, I'm sorry, I turn it sideways so it's easier for me to do. And these are narrow, so this one is from here to here. This one's from here to, to here, to there. And then this is a little one, again, that's on the other side. They do that a lot with our fences here in Texas. So, and something we've started seeing is horizontal fences. Now, I've heard that's a, a big deal in other parts of the states, but I had not seen it much um, around here. Okay, so then let's just grab a color. I probably should color check this first. It's 92. See, that's more of a pinkish color, pinkish red. But what's going to happen is I can come in on top of this with another color and make it more of a uh, cedar. Okay, so let's flip the pencils. Try not to touch 
the camera. This is number 32. And this is going to look more like a barn wood fence because I'm tending to go towards the reds on here instead of just cedar. Cedar has more of a orangey base to it. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in with my 41. And again, you pick the colors you like. Now you notice I'm losing my knot holes. I am going to come back in and put those in. But I just wanted to get you started on one piece here. Because I would like to show you... I'm, I'm wanting to just do one video. Okay? Instead of five different videos. You know, I know your inbox gets kind of full of stuff after a while. Let's do this number 44. And now let's put our knot holes back in. And let's add some, let's just add some um, wood grain. All right, see how we're jagged? And then comes around and down. Let's put some here. It's jagged, comes around and down. All right, jagged and down. And you can add the wood grain like this to any coloring page you're doing. All right, did you kind of see how that's going? So you would do the whole thing like that. All right, that was number three. Then there's this one. This is the horizontal fence. You're gonna do it the exact same way we just did the last one, except it's turned the other direction. And you can see it's got some weeds here. Just take your greens or even a gel pen because gel pens can really make some grass um, look nice. But you're just gonna come up and around with this tall grass or these weeds. Okay, and keep them light and airy. So get that all put in. Then this down here is a retaining wall from where the one house it's higher up and then the next one's down. Do this just like we did the brick. Okay, so go back and catch the brick videos. That's easy. Then the last one, I can't believe we're getting all this in. This is awesome. Okay, this fence was actually lighter tans and yellows. So let me grab a couple of these. 79 and 47. So let's take this one, put in some knot holes. And knot holes don't have to be real neat. And some of this wood grain. And again, I'm sure I can see this better than you can because it's right in front of me. So when you get it printed out and you're ready to color along, it's, you're just gonna learn so much more. So, and for you that are purchasing, thank you. Um, it supports me a little bit. I do so many videos and I'm not charging for any of them. So it really does help to at least put a little bit of food on the table. But anyway, I just love coloring and teaching, so I will probably keep doing this. All right, so see how this fence is actually going to be a little more on the golden yellow side. Now, for the rocks down underneath, now I'm just going to knock all that back. I'm going to lay this down and actually go on there, just knocking it back so that the fence isn't yellow, yellow. But see how quickly that fence came together? Again, you can do that on any of your um, pages that have fences on them. Now, for this one, I am actually going to go back and grab, let's see, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it's this one. Let's just try this. This is nine. You'll see if this works right. 
Um, it's a little more pink than what I want. Let's try 75. Yeah, that's better. So 75, and I would come in and do all this little filler with this 75. I would get all that in, okay? Just do all that. Then the lightest areas, because you want that filler color somewhere else also so that it doesn't look out of place, I would come in and do a little bit of that in some other areas too. Then the same colors you used in your fence, and this is going to bring the whole thing together and make it just flow and look a little more cohesive. So then come in, and now I will go more back to my circles. You're going to do each stone. Yeah, it's going to take a while, but... um. I entered a contest once for this old house and it was a coloring sheet with stone on it. Oh my goodness, that was the coolest looking stone by the time I had finished. And it took a while, but it was the whole front facade of the house. That's why when I saw this retaining wall, I was like, mm, gotta have it. Because it does teach stone. All right, and the best way to learn this is to actually sit down and color it. Okay, now see, and I'm keeping a very soft touch on this, but I'm going where it was a little bit darker. So this time my three shades are not shades that necessarily go together, but I'm using them together anyway. So you do each rock, yeah each one just go in there and do it and again it's um, it's very rewarding in the end because your wall will look like a photograph you've seen people post those pictures and they're like yeah I colored this and you're like uh-uh that's a photo no they're they're coloring them it's just um, it's grayscale and it's just this easy. It takes time. Um, sometimes people need to just slow down a little bit. And again, I'm rushing through these because I want to get through some of this where you can really see it. I like you to see what you're doing. I don't, I don't think you should need to purchase stuff blindly. Um, the reason I do Etsy, somebody asked, yeah, the reason I do Etsy instead of getting published is if you don't like everything, you're not stuck with a book where you only liked half of it. And then you're like, what do I do with the rest of the book? With Etsy, I feel like you can pick and choose what you want to do. And I'm still taking these same colors and now I'm just blending them in together. And I'm going to go over that pinkish color too. But see how that's looking like a real rock? That's what you want to accomplish here. And by going over the pink, I'm turning it into another color. And it's all very cohesive and works together. But yeah, so anyway, that's that's the reason for my, my Etsy instead of publishing. And... Um, I like to do the videos and everything, so I just do it that way. Now, when you look at that, hopefully that looks somewhat like rock for you. And you would do that whole thing. Okay, so that's the five pages. You're going to have the one with the rock. You're going to have the one with the bricks. Um, you're going to have the one where you're going to practice your wood grain. You're going to have the one with the knot holes and then you're going to have that very first one with just the whole arch and the different layers here with the pieces there so again um, it is on my Etsy and I will put a link on Etsy that brings you back to the videos also so they'll be linked to each other so anyway well that's it we did a touch on all five in 30 minutes. Okay, I will talk to you later.